Hey students, we're going to go over 10, 11, and 12 on this unit one, part three review. All right, you're going to notice we're getting into uh, some Z scores here. All right, this is chapter six from our materials back in September. So we have 70 of the highest dams in the world, I guess the 70 highest, have an average height of 206 with a standard deviation of 35 meters. All right, so that's my mean, and then that's my standard deviation. Okay, they're telling us that the Hoover Dam and the Grand Coulee Dams have heights of 221 and 168 meters, respectively. And there are two Russian dams, Nurik and Sharvek, that have heights of Z scores, they give us Z scores, 2.69 and negative 1.13. So let me just kind of keep track here. So I've got Nurik, which is a Z score of 2.69. Six nine, and the Sharvak, which is negative one point one three. So really, what I want to do is I want to figure out the Z scores for the Hoover Dam and the Grand Coulee Dam, and then compare them based on their Z scores. So essentially, do you remember the formula to find a Z score? This will be on the AP exam. Is it, is it mean minus like? So it's y minus. Like the given yeah, the given mean. So there are two symbols I've used. Do you remember the symbols that I've used for mean? No, that's the standard deviation. For mean? Mu, you can use mu here. Or if you don't know if this is considered a model or not, or if you think it's like actual data, you would use y bar. I don't really care here. I guess technically I would probably use Y bar because they're telling us the 70 um, highest dams have an average height. So I'd probably use Y bar and S for standard deviation. But if you used mu for mean and sigma for standard deviation, I'm not like mad about it. Okay. So let's do this for the Hoover Dam. How high is the Hoover Dam? So 221 minus, what's the average? 206. And then what is the standard deviation? 35. So let's take out our calculator and figure out what that z-score is. All right, so I've got 221 minus 206 divided by 35. 0.429. Okay, let's do the same thing for the Grand Coulee Dam, which is 168 meters. So this was, I'll put a little H here for Hoover. This is Grand Coulee. So 168 minus 206 divided by 35. So negative 1.086. Okay. So once you get to this point, you can order them from the lowest, or I guess smallest, shortest dam to the highest one. It says in ascending size, so we're going least to greatest here. And before we do that, I just wanna make sure you understand. A Z-score just says how many standard deviations your data value is from the mean, from the average. So this height of 206 meters, let's say I make up another dam. Do you guys know another dam? I don't know any names of dams. Anyone know any names of a dam? Beaver Dam. Beaver Dam, is that a real dam? No. Okay, let's just say there is a dam out there in the world that's called the Beaver Dam. Okay, and let's say that dam is 206 meters. So when I use this, right, 206 minus 206, what happens to my numerator? It's zero, so your z-score is zero. So if your data value matches the average, that would have a z-score of zero. So z-scores that are positive are going to be higher or taller, bless you, than the average. Z-scores that are negative, 
are going to be shorter or smaller, right? And the farther they are away, the more extreme they are, okay? So in this case, what is my smallest number? Be careful here. Yeah, so Charvik, just barely, right, is a little further to the left, right? So it's a little further to the left than the Grand Coulee. So it should be the Charvak first is going to be your shortest one, then Grand Coulee, all right? And then what's the next number? Hoover. And what is the highest one here? Nurek. Nurek. So it's going to be A. And they will ask you to do something like this on the AP exam when they have you organize based on z-scores. Yes. Is there a way to do, like, reverse? Like, use Absolutely. Can you you, that's what I thought I was going to do first. Um, I don't know if I really need to show it. I mean, I can show you one if you'd like. But do you see these 2.69 and the negative 1.13? Yeah. If you replace that with z, right? But you wouldn't know this, right? So you'd have to essentially move this over with multiplication oh, and then add 206. And you get the respective height. So you just different algebra. All right. I, I, I'm gonna, I teach you this way because more likely, more than likely it'll be like this on the AP exam. But if you want to do the other way, Thomas, totally fine. You do have enough information to, to go that way. That's fine. Questions on 10? Okay. All right, number 11. So here we have two dot plots. All right, shows the yearly wages for male and female executives at a large firm. Which of the following conclusions cannot be drawn from the lots? I think that's supposed to say plots. I'll go back and change that someday. <laughs> I'm not perfect either. Okay, what do you think about A? A greater proportion of male employees than female employees are executives at this firm. Well, let's just ask you this. How many male executives are there? 15 males. How many female executives? Okay. Now, if so this problem says that there's a greater proportion of male employees than female employees are executives at this firm. Do I know how many employees are at this firm? I don't, right? So I actually, in this case, I don't know if I feel comfortable saying that this is true. So I'm just gonna put a little dot there, all right? If they had said a greater number of executives are male as opposed to female, I would agree with that, right? Because there are 15 males compared to 10 females. Let's do B, no executive receives a salary less than 25,000. Well, what's the lowest male salary for, ex for executives? 36,000 for females? So is there anyone making less than 25 for the executives? No, so I'm okay with that. that. That would be a true statement. Okay, let's do the median. You guys remember how to find the median? All right, let's do it. Let's find the median for the male executives. So cross out. All right, I found it, it's right here. So that median looks to be about 56, 57. So male median is about 56, okay. Let's do the female. It's between these two, right? You might be asking yourselves, how come I knew exactly what it was for the males? How come I'm in between two for the females? Remember, if you have an odd number of data values, your median will be a value, all right? In this case, it was the, was it the eighth one? Yes, the eighth one. And if you have an even number, it will be between two, in this case, in between the fifth and sixth. So what's in between 59? And I, I'm just I'm trying to make the average of that. It looks like it's just barely past 60, but I'm cool with saying 60. So which one has a larger median? The females. And this says the median salary paid to males is less than the median salary paid to females. So is that true? Yeah. That seems true to me. 
Let's do D. The range of salaries paid to males is less than the range of salaries paid to females. Let's get some ranges here. What's the range for the males? What's the highest one? Yeah, I'm thinking 74 as well. Yeah, 73, 74. What's the lowest one? 36. So what's 74 minus 34 would be 40, so about 38K. And then the females, it's 75 to 25. That's about 50K for the range. So it says the range of salaries paid to males is less than, yep, that's also true. And the last one, more male than female executives have salaries over 70,000. And if you look at this over 70, looks like we've got three males that uh, executives make over 70, but only one female. So that's also true. So I'm gonna go with A as my answer, because again, if they had said a greater number of executives are male as opposed to female, I would have said A was correct. But instead they said proportion, I just don't know. All right, let's do one more on this, and then we'll go to our next page. All right, so another box and whisker plot here, or a box plot. And this is about the CHIP program. I guess CHIP, because program's in there. And this is showing us the yearly expenditures by state in millions of dollars. So they give a couple of things here. Right, you can see there is a state out here, right, that's spending one, two, five, nine point three million, which I believe that means it's spending billions of dollars. Okay. There's also a state that's spending five point does that say five point seven million? That seems bad. That seems low compared to a billion. I'm not sure how that's possible. All right, so what is the median? Do you remember which one is the median in a box plot? Yeah, I always tell kids it's in air quotes, right? I know you can't see me if you're watching this, but in air quotes, yeah, go ahead. Uh, the middle of the box, it's not always going to be in the middle, but whatever that line is, right, that is the median. So this right here, this 77.5 million is going to be the median. Can you guys sort it out yourselves? Thanks, Caroline. Now it asks for the IQR, the interquartile range. Do you guys remember the formula for that? Nice, Diana. Quartile three minus quartile one. So let's get our third quartile. In this case, because the box plot is horizontal, the quartile one is gonna be the first. Remember what this part of the box plot is, the very beginning? That's the min, and this part of the box is the first quartile, so 33.4 is quartile one. There's the median, well, that's the median, and then quartile three is 159.2. So the IQR is 125.8 million. Now, as you're sorting that out and writing it down, letter B says that the federal government has decided to take over $3 million of the administrative costs for the CHIP state expenditures. All right, so essentially, what are they doing to all of these numbers? It, very good, reducing by $3 million. Okay, so that means instead of my min being 5.7, they're gonna take that away. What's my new minimum value? 2.7, same with my max. All of the data values, even ones you don't see here, right? Every single state is gonna take off three. Do you remember what happens when you take all of your data values and you subtract or add, in this case we're subtracting, but subtract or add by a constant. Do you remember what changes? Um, the, mean. the mean, measures of center. Mean, 
median will change. All right, so when it says, what are the median and the interquartile range? So the median will change. So my median is going to be the 77.5 minus 3, which is 74.5. Now this is the tricky part, right? If it's just subtraction in this case, or if it had been addition, you are not going to change the measures of spread. So interquartile range is a measure of spread. I know it's weird to think of it, all right? But if you think of it like this, remember what we just did, Diana told us the formula here. If we took 159.2 and subtract the three, that's 156.2. 33.4 minus three is 30.4. So if you subtracted 156.2 minus 30.4, you get the same interquartile range. So even though everything has shifted three units down or three million dollars down, we haven't actually changed the IQR. So the IQR is the same. So what you need to know for the AP exam is that if you add or subtract by a constant to all of your data values, measures of center will change. So mean and median will change. Measures of spread, like the range, standard deviation, interquartile range, those will remain the same. But what if you were to take all your data values and multiply or divide by a constant? Then what happens? Everything changes, okay? So not only the mean, the median, but also your measures of spread will change too. So if it's multiplying or dividing, everything changes. All right, let's do one more. Based on the above box plot, which of the following is the most reasonable value, value for the mean state expenditure in millions of dollars? Well, how would you describe the shape of this box plot? To the right. Yeah, I'm thinking it's skewed to the right right, because the tail is longer here, right, and then what about these values? Ah, you don't have to say it, you can do what? You can oh, say yeah, what? IQR, well, I don't, actually, I, I don't know, I haven't calculated it, but oh, you wait, no, no, it's the graph shows. Yes, Thomas, very good, see how it has those little squares, right, I think you're, um, the AP exam usually uses like dots, uh, like circles, or they use like an asterisk for extreme outlier. The point is, uh, Thomas noticed it, right, it, the graph is showing you that those are outliers. All right, and so what are those outliers going to do to the mean? They're going to pull the mean that way, to the right. Pull the mean to the right. So am I going to do 78? No. Is that to the right of 77.5? It is, but that's barely to the right. All right. That's just barely. So I'm going to cross that one out. The next one is the one I actually chose as the answer. 135. 135 is about here. All right, the reason I stopped there, and again, I don't know for sure if that's the right answer. 325 is almost, almost to the end of this box plot. That feels like a lot to be pulled. Like, again, I'm not sure how much this, this concerns me, right? That's a really big number. So maybe it does, but I just need you to know that outliers and skewness are going to pull the mean in that direction. Is it gonna pull the median? Yes, but will it pull it as much? No, right? The median is much more resistant. So I'm going to write 135 million. Go ahead, Thomas. Could we use any of the other four numbers or no? Like, because like, the way you're saying it's like the most important thing that we want you to know is that like, you know that it gets like- Pulled up. Yeah. Um, I, I think you can. I just, in my experience of doing problems like this, um, I know this is not an AP question, but I, I've yet to see a question where it has me pull it so far that it's it's like past where almost all my data like is. So I just think, even though that's a really high number, I don't think it's gonna pull it. Like, to go back to the first one I ever did, right? What are, I know there's a lot of kids outside, but what are the, uh, what's the average age in this class if I'm not in the room? Probably not, I don't think, is everybody 18? It's probably in between 17 and 18. I could be wrong. Right, but it's probably like 17.6, I don't know, whatever it is, right? So if you bring me into the room, right, I'm almost double, I am double? I am double your age. You know, you get old, you forget. I'm double your age. So what am I gonna do to the mean? I'm gonna pull it towards me, right? But am I gonna pull it to like, to be like 30 years old? No, it's gonna probably pull to be like 19 or 20. 
Like I, I will pull it, but I just have yet to see it where it pulls it so much that it's like, like super far to the right. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna stop here for this one.